my video in this video we are going to see how ingenious tireless and stubborn louis pasteur irrefutably disproved the theory of spontaneous generation in my previous video i explained about francesco redi and how he disproved the theory of spontaneous generation through his experiments but there appeared champions for and challengers of the theory that living things can originate spontaneously each with a new and sometimes fantastic explanation or bit of experimental evidence in 1749 john needham published a report of his own experiment in which he exposed meat to hot ashes hoping to kill all pre-existing microbes he then placed the treated meat into flasks and sealed the flasks after a few days john needham observed the appearance of organisms not present at the start of the experiment and concluded that the bacteria originated from the meat in reality however he likely did not kill all pre-existing microbes lesaro spallanzani lesaro spallanzani did not agree with needham's conclusions he performed hundreds of carefully executed experiments lesaro spallanzani boiled beef broth for an hour and then sealed the flasks heated and sealed flasks remained clear without any microbes following incubation there were no signs of spontaneous growth unless the flasks were subsequently opened to the air he suggested that microbes were introduced into the flasks from the air thus spallanzani's results contradicted the findings of needham though spallanzani's results confirmed in repeated experiments failed to convince needham who insisted that air was essential to the spontaneous production of microbes that was destroyed during spallanzani's extended boiling and sealing of the flasks prevented new air entering and causing spontaneous generation this argument was answered some 60 or 70 years later independently by two other investigators frank sulza and theodor swan sulza passed air through strong acid solution into boiled infusions whereas swan passed air into a flask through red hot tubes in neither case did microbes appear but the die hard advocates of spontaneous generation were still not convinced they said acid and heat altered the air so that it would not support growth about 1850 h scroder and theodor von dusch performed a more convincing experiment by passing air through cotton into flasks containing heated broth thus the microbes were filtered out of the air by the cotton fibers so that growth did not occur and a basic technique of plugging bacterial culture tubes with cotton stoppers was initiated in 1859 felix archimed pouchet published an extensive report proving the occurrence of spontaneous generation irritated by pouchet's logic and data pasteur performed experiment that entered the argument for all time louis pasteur 
prepared a flask with a long narrow goose neck opening called swan neck flasks in which he boiled broth to sterilize it his design allowed air inside the flasks to be exchanged with air from the outside but prevented the introduction of any airborne microorganisms which could get caught in the bends of the flasks neck and no microbes appeared in the solution louis pasteur's experiment irrefutably disproved the theory of spontaneous generation pasteur reported as results with a great flourish at the sorbonne in paris on april 7 1864 pasteur said that life only comes from life finally john tindall conducted experiments in a specially designed box to prove that dust carried the germs he demonstrated that if no dust was present sterile broth remained free of microbial growth for indefinite periods this demonstration extended louis pasteur's earlier demonstrations that the presence of microorganisms is a precondition for biomass decomposition however the next year tindall failed to reproduce the result some of his eat sterilized broths kept in the tindall's germ box rotted in the optically pure air from this broths tindall was led to find viable bacterial spores all bacteria are killed by simple boiling except that bacteria have a spore form that can survive boiling tindall found a way to eradicate the bacterial spores that process came to be known as tindallization the first effective way to destroy bacterial spores friends i am concluding the topic spontaneous generation and biogenesis here see you soon with another topic in my next video thank you friends